Aaron Sampson here with Ryan Schubert. We're gonna talk about the uh, Twitch stream that happened today with Rainbow Six Siege. Now, for those who don't know, Rainbow Six Siege is a Ubisoft project that I think, what did it kill, Patriots or some previous project yeah, they had? Yeah, this is, this is what Patriots became, yeah. It is a uh, game where two professional military outfits morally ambiguously fight over a soccer mom in a suburban uh, Boston suburb. That sounds is, about is that right about to right? me. Is that about right? <laughs> So the game is, is broken down into two sections. two sections. Do you want to give the rundown? Yeah, so the first phase is called the setup phase and it's about one minute long. And that gives the attacking team or the breaching team uh, time to use their drones to try and figure out where the defending team is. And then at the same time, the defending team is barricading and choosing where they're going to put their hostage. So after the preparation phase, then the teams take a vote. So the defending team uh, votes in on one of two rooms, or sorry, on one of four rooms they want to put the hostage in. Right. The attacking team chooses one of two deployment points so they're not instantly shot to death upon approaching the house. And they can split up two if they want. So each of the two teams are then essentially broken down into three classes. You got your guy with the assault rifle, the guy with the shotgun, and the guy with the SMG. Additionally, there's some specialty equipment like a riot shield, um, a defensive like metal position, and um, like a portable piece of cover. Yeah. Portable piece of cover, basically. So during the setup phase, the, there's a lot of barricading going on. Players are frantically either covering windows or basically putting up uh, what we assume are reinforced walls that yeah. probably cannot be breached. Right. It the, wasn't clear from the gameplay, but it looked like that was the idea, it was that there was basically a counter to a breaching charge. Um, the, uh, the, the window covers, though, could just pretty much be meleeed out, and both teams demonstrated that. Yes. Now, some of the things that we did and did not see. Um, what we did see a lot of was games were won or lost by player communication. They reached the wall from the garage to the weight room. Um, the attacking team was constantly talking. It's like Counter-Strike. They had names for all the rooms, and when somebody went down, they would like talk to each other about what room something happened in. Like, oh, guy went down in the bedroom. And so they'd be telling each other that. Um, same with the defending team. Just it seemed like map memorization and communication was the biggest part of these of winning or losing these rounds. Yeah, yeah. This this is one of those games that'll take a while to, you know, a, a good you know week after it drops to like get familiar with all the environments before being able to get to that level of communication. So a question that we also had was, you know, at the start of a round, why didn't say the defending team just blow out all the walls and kill the attacking team on their way in, or like, why didn't the attacking team just shoot up the whole house and just whatever happens, happens? So we looked at the ammo counts. It turns out that on both sides, ammo was very limited in this build. So each, each class had about 60 rounds of ammunition that really only broke down into two clips. And you can burn through two clips very, very quickly in a firefight. <laughs> Anybody who's played a shooter knows that. So speaking of shooters, Ryan, how do you feel about this game overall? So far, I'm optimistic going in. I was a big fan of Search and Destroy in Call of Duty and also uh, Diffuse in Battlefield, so that kind of single spawn, tactical, communication-based gameplay is, I'm a fan of that. And I'm really excited for, you know, I've said this over and over again when we've been covering other shooters, but I'm really excited for a game that feels like it's actually pushing technical boundaries. And for me, the destruction is doing that. The, the ability to like grapple anywhere on the house and come through any window or come through the floor, you know, maybe even the ceiling. Um, I think that's what gives these games immense replayability is just mm -hmm. trusting players to do things that are unpredictable. So Rainbow Six Siege is coming out in 2015 on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Stay tuned to GameSpot.com for more Rainbow Six Siege coverage.